What's up guys, my name is Justin. Welcome back to the channel today. We are back on iRacing. And today we're going to talk a little bit about why the Pontiac Solstice is the best car iRacing has ever had scanned, why it's the best training car in the sim, and why we need the Pontiac Solstice back in a full-time official series. Last week I did a video as a kind of a tutorial walkthrough around Summit Point Raceway in the Pontiac Solstice talking about why it was my favorite track, maybe a little bit of why it was my best track, and just kind of why I loved it so much as not just a training tool, but as a track to race around other cars at, even in a multi-class setting. And so I have come up with five reasons that I think that the Pontiac Solstice is the best car on the sim, why I love it so much, and that why it needs to come back, and how you can possibly use it as a training tool if you're looking to get into road racing. And number one, first and foremost, it's a free car. It comes as the iRacing base content it has from its inception, I shouldn't say that. I don't know if the initial cars were all free. I mean, something had to be free when The Sim came out. You didn't just get a subscription and have nothing. But uh, as long as I've been on The Sim almost 11 years now, uh, it's been free content. And even though now it's not in a official series and is very sparsely used, it's still free. You can still get it for free when you sign up, even though it's not used in any official series. So that's a big benefit. You can hop into it, learn it as a tool at any of the tracks that you own and Get your braking points down, get your throttle points down, grip, car control, uh, slides, that type of thing. So having a free card you can access right off the bat from day one is always a big positive. Number two, it's great to learn tracks at because it's a low speed car. I mean, at absolute maximum velocity, you're not doing much more than like 110, 120 miles an hour. And that makes it perfect for, you know, seeing things in slow motion, being precise with your turning points, your braking points, all your inputs. Uh, and even on like bigger tracks like Daytona, it races very well. You know, the oval parts of Daytona are pretty boring in this car, but just as purely a learning tool and being able to make adjustments on the fly and uh, figure out your A's and B's uh, just when you're getting up to speed from a start, it's wonderful for that. Number three, it's easy to drive if you're just not chasing lap time necessarily. Um, and that's because it has so much grip on this new race tire that's had for a couple years, which I mentioned last week. It handles extremely well. Um, it's a very neutral, balanced car. It's slightly understeer but that's just because you're not going that fast. And there, there's there's pretty much unlimited grip if you're driving the car properly. Um, but it does have a lot of different handling characteristics that are quirky just because it's such a low-speed car. And then ABS. ABS is a big deal, especially when you're just starting out, where if you make a mistake or if something happens and you need to panic, put your left foot all the way down on your brake pedal if you're a two-foot breaker. Um, if you brake with your right foot, obviously, put your right foot all the way down on the brake pedal. But uh, if, you, if you panic and something goes wrong, uh, you don't need to worry about locking up or traction control or anything coming into play and ruining your lap and ruining your test session. ABS... Just correct whatever you're feeling, your slide, your steer, your spin, whatever it is, and get back going again. It's it's a good tool to be able to recover from, and again, it's a very easy car to drive at nine-tenths of the limit. Pretty much anybody can hop in and within half an hour or an hour of practice be able to get 90 or 95% out of the speed in this car. So that's a great, great tool, and again, it makes for really good racing. Number four, it's a very fun car to drive hard. When you're in that last 5 to 10% from 95% up to 100% of this car's pace, it's so fun to drive. I can't say enough how many great battles I've had at maximum attack at 90 miles an hour in this car. Um, I've had some great battles with friends. I've had some great battles with some really spectacular sim racers, uh, people that are much, much better than myself. And that's been proven time and again how, how great this car is to push to the limit and how much fun you can have just trying to chase lap time and chase speed and chase victories. Uh, part of that comes from the harder you push this car, the more rewarding your pace is. Like I said, it is a little bit quirky sometimes with the handling at some tracks, but the, the harder you pace generally, or the harder you push, excuse me, generally the more pace you'll find and the more fun you'll have, and you'll find lap time at most tracks. That is until you overheat the tires, especially if it's a hot track temp. You can not overheat the front tires in this car, and then it'll be chronically understeery, and you will have a rough time with finding lap time. But uh, it is a very fun car to push to the limit, and you are able to kind of push as hard as you want within the limits of the race car. And finally, number five, this car races very, very well. Um, it isn't really upset by contact. Uh, it, it is an older damage model, so sometimes it gets a little bit quirky with how the damage works, but it allows for aggressive maneuvers, aggressive battles, crossovers, the ability to push people in a draft if it's a draft track, things like that. And it, it, the car takes it all. It's very, very fun. It's very, very productive. Um, 
it's just a great car to be able to go to battle with and enjoy racing with other cars close proximity. So that's definitely a big positive, especially when this car was in PCC. You had multiple classes going around. You had lots of weird traffic battles, cars coming out of the pits, being lapped by Mustangs. Lots of stuff happened with this car when it was in an official series. And it's just such a great car. It never let me down for having a great battle, even on days that I was running around at the front of the field by myself. The way it interacts with traffic and the pace differential it had made it a perfect car for that series. And that's why I'm so bummed they took it away, because even when the, the Pontiac race wasn't that great, how it fit into that series in the multi-class setting was spectacular. So those are my five thoughts on why the Solstice is so incredible and why it needs to come back to the sim and why it could be a great entry-level car and training tool for newer iRacers, people looking to improve their road racing skills, getting into road racing for the first time, and a plethora of other reasons why this car is great and needs to still be prevalent in sim racing, even though it's hated by so many, and why I love it so much. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. The love and support as always. Make sure you drop a like and a sub down below. I don't want you to miss any of the action from iRacing, any of the other games I play. Uh, any other real life content that I put out. So it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you all fall in love with the Solstice as much as I did. And, you know, we'll see what other videos we can come out. Hint, hint, there might be another Solstice video next week. But as always, until next time, it. Bye.